Good morning. You're just in time. Welcome to the St. Gabriel Cafe, your sacred space to sip on today's local blend of faithful encouragement. Let's start our day together. Good morning. Come on in. Pull up a chair. I'm Dave Orsborn. And I'm Amanda Miller. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome, friends, into the St. Gabriel Cafe, our live and local morning show. This morning, our friends Mary Beth Eberhardt and Lisa Iglesias, the co-hosts of The Visitation, are back with us. And we're going to be chatting about letting go so that we can find freedom in Christ. Good morning, Cam. Good morning, Amanda. Good morning. Good morning. I was practicing a new cadence. Mm, Like it? I appreciated it. (laughs) (laughs) Let's pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father, for this day. For your goodness and for your blessings. And for your love. Lord, we're just so grateful that you sustain us every day. That you are loving us into existence every day. Lord, we just ask you to um, meet us in those those places of our heart that are a little down today or um, a little unsure today or if things seem a little hectic or crazy, Lord, we just invite you into into those spaces. And in particular, in those places where we find joy today, Lord, that we may turn to you and rejoice with you knowing that all good things come from your hands. And so we give all honor and glory to you. Lord, we ask for a greater perseverance in running this good race, um, to run side by side with one another, to be good neighbors, to love one, ach- one another well. Lord, in those places that we are struggling with sin, help us to just see them. Please reveal them. Please convict us and give us a heart of repentance that has courage to turn to you because you are a good, good father, Lord. And there is, there is no fear in love and you are love. Lord, that we may be convicted of this and be unburdened by our sins. Mama Mary, we ask for your intercession and pray all this in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Friday. It is Friday. Hey. Woohoo. <laughs> <laughs> you have any fun weekend plans? Uh yeah, spirit drive prep. Okay. Yeah. You're gonna work be working overtime, huh? A little bit. Yeah, probably a bit tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, just to get things ready so I don't have to do it next week. Sure. There's a lot of prep to be yeah. to be had. Yeah. Working ahead. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> It's going to be fun. We have such a good lineup of priests yeah. and and hosts and volunteers are coming together. There's still room, friends, if you want to volunteer during the Spirit Drive, stgabrielradio.com. You can also go online and make an early donation uh, to be entered into a drawing for football tickets. Mm, fun. OSU, OSU, I was going to say OSU Newark. No. no. That would be quite the game, huh? <laughs> OSU Nebraska. Uh, so, and when you're on there to make your donation, you can also choose, select the priest team that you want to support. Okay. So, I don't know if everyone knows this, but we're changing it up a little bit. You know, I didn't even mention that. What are we doing different? Right. We're not doing basketball. Mm-mm. Cam, what are we doing? We're doing cornhole. Okay. <laughs> State game of Ohio, right? Uh, I'm left with the impression you're pretty stoked about this because you seem to love cornhole. I do love cornhole. I do love cornhole. Uh, I've been playing cornhole for a long time in my life. And it's I, maybe not of Ohio, but definitely the Midwest mm-hmm. owns it more than anywhere else. Um, but the National Cornhole Association is based in Cincinnati, Ohio. So I think we should claim it. Um, it would have to compete probably with Ohio State football to get the state slot, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's a great game. It's a lot of fun. It is. It is, and I'm very excited. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, 
it, it, the logistics of how far to throw the cornhole bag has been something going through my brain in the last 24 hours is where exactly do we want our priest friends to stand um so if somebody who wants to make an early donation wants to also suggest the foot distance that we should make mm. them throw from then i'm open to suggestions we have a large arena we with do. lots of room so possibilities yeah. are endless yep we've retooled the basketball courts to allow for cornhole and it, it, it's fun i love seeing the priests get into it and and compete in order to uh, support St. Gabriel Radio and so many people come together to that end. It's just, it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Looking forward to it. I was informed that Father Fulton is practicing. Ooh. So if you are not on team Father Fulton, please inform your priest <laughs> that the other teams are practicing and he should too. Did he have ski ball in his basement? Was it Father Fulton that had a home a home yes. ski ball? <laughs> Whoa! He probably then also had a home basketball, and he didn't do as well in the basketball, I'm told, as he did on ski ball when we did it with him. He was on fire. Yeah, he's good at ski ball. I'm interested to see how he does at cornhole. Actually, I'm interested to see how all of our priests do at cornhole. We'll have to have a little staff tournament. Ooh, sure. So. Good idea. A little intimidated because I'm not from Ohio, but mm. I'm here for it. Well, let's do it tomorrow. Let's have a cornhole turn now. No. No. <laughs> I will I'm going to be sleeping tomorrow. in, Dave. <laughs> All right. Dave Orsborn, champion. <laughs> staff champion. <laughs> Everyone else. Isn't no one else is showing up? <laughs> so. Today, let's take a look uh, at the reading, the gospel reading. We're in uh, Luke chapter 6, verses 39 to 42. It's Friday, September 13th, the 23rd week in ordinary time, and the church celebrates St. John Chrysostom. Chrysostom. Chrysostom? Tomato? Yes. Tomato? Uh, yes. <laughs> Happy feast day to all the folks celebrating uh, or the, where their parish is uh, St. John Chrysost Chrysostom. <laughs> That's a couple sil syllables too, too much hilarious. for me right now. Yeah. The Byzantine Catholic Church on Cleveland Avenue. So good friends over there. Sorry for butchering your patron's name. Luke chapter 6 verses 39 to 42. Jesus told his disciples a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? No disciple is superior to the teacher, but when fully trained, every disciple will be like his teacher. Why do you notice the splinter in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own? How can you say to your brother, brother, let me remove that splinter in your eye when you do not even notice the wooden beam in your own eye. You hypocrite. Remove the wooden beam from your eye first. Then you will see clearly to remove the splinter in your brother's eye. Amen. Ladies first. <laughs> okay. Um... I think what I'm struck by this morning is just the word blind and asking myself, Lord, in what ways am I blind? I think this is a great gospel for personal reflection um, and examination of conscience and asking, Lord, reveal those places that I need help. Mm. Almost just like you know, when you're standing in confession and you're asking the Holy Spirit to convict you of your sins and to bring to mind your sins. Well, this is another opportunity to just, Lord, where in my life am I falling short? Or where am I in my life? Have I just been blinded and not been um, able to see my faults? And one one way that I think this this gospel can suggest and help us is when we see the faults of others to really go inside of myself and ask where in my life does that fault 
play out. And maybe we don't struggle with something the same way that that person does. But I've found in my own life, if I, if I think about it enough, I, we're all sinners, right? Mm. And, and maybe I don't struggle with it in this way or in that manner, but maybe in a different way. And it's really humbling. So instead of taking that opportunity to be maybe moved by being frustrated with however this person is acting or whatever it might be, to take it really as an opportunity to to humble myself and ask, okay, but Lord, in what way do I struggle with that? Remove the blindness uh, of my own heart. So, yeah. Similarly, I began with the uh, blindness also. My prayer went to what a blessing uh, good good friendships are. Mm. When brother is able to help brother, sister able to help sister um, with the splinters. Um, and having a good friendship or you know a spouse or certainly even children uh, to help us see our shortcomings. Um, it's not always easy to receive criticism, Mm -hmm. but that that's where relationships are so important. When somebody's coming out of love, um, to help you improve or to overcome a a particular challenge that they themselves may have faced, um, receiving criticism in that way is, uh, is productive. And so, The prayer is for uh, good friendships, for those relationships where we can help each other remove the sins, remove the blind spots from our lives uh, so that we can all grow closer to Christ, our master. Similar to you, Dave, and also praying with that wooden beam in your own eye and the splinter in your brother's eye, um, I also flip it in my head too. And I say, okay, Lord, when another person has a wooden beam in their eye and I have a splinter in mine, Lord, I want to be an intercessor right now. I want to pray for the grace for them to recognize the wooden beam in their eye. And then the trust for me that when somebody is coming to me and saying, Hey Cam, I want to challenge you here. I want to call you on here. I want to call you higher here. Uh, the trust in me to say, um, not to assume that this person is high and mighty or, thinks they're better than me, but rather that this person has checked themselves first and has said, okay, let me address myself before going to Cam to challenge him. Um, and so just praying for those two graces today, that, mm. that Lord, you would inspire other people uh, as well as myself to address our own wounds first and then to look around us and to say, who else, uh, who else can I help? Who else can I get to, can I accompany to get to heaven with. Did either of you pray on the difference between the beam and a splinter? The Lord is telling us to look at the beam in your own eye before Mm -hmm. you talk about somebody else's splinter. Mm -hmm. A beam is a heck of a lot larger than a splinter. Yeah. I think some translations even say log. (laughs) So (laughs) yeah, our Lord is really making a, Making it a distinction here, huh? Well, it's sometimes those little faults in somebody else, you know, they just kind of poke at you mm-hmm. or you see like a, a a pretty minor shortcoming in somebody else. But then you self-reflect and you're like, man, that my challenge with a particular issue or a particular sin at the root it's easy through that self-reflection to get to the root Mm. sin or the root problem is a lot larger than what I really saw in the other person. Mm -hmm. That's not to say that they don't have also deeper, deeper problems, but it's that, yeah, that self-reflection is uh, the beam right there in front of you. (laughs) So, Great show lined up for you today. We have Mary Beth Eberhardt and Lisa Iglesias, the co-hosts of The Visitation, coming into the St. Gabriel Cafe. We're going to be talking about letting go and finding freedom in Christ. Friends, thanks for being in the cafe with us this hour. Stay with us.
This is Bill Messerly, the Executive Director for St. Gabriel Catholic Radio. Mother Angelica spoke about the indispensability of local Catholic radio. She knew that it wasn't enough to just provide faithful Catholic teaching, that it was critical to have local involvement. Through the support of our listening family, St. Gabriel Radio has been on the move. We've added new stations in Scioto County and Athens, Ohio. We also produce many local programs, including Reflections with Bishop Fernandez and the St. Gabriel Cafe. To keep things moving, we need to make the Fall Spirit Drive our best ever. Our goal is $150,000. Admittedly, this is a big goal, but we can do it with everyone's help. Those who make a gift before September 18th, the beginning of the Cornhole Tournament, will be entered in to win two tickets to an Ohio State football game. Do your part. Go to stgabrielradio.com today. That's stgabrielradio.com. Do you have a minute for lasting happiness? Living virtuously is the way to freedom, happiness, and holiness. To grow in virtue, we must learn about it, practice it, and persevere in it. This is what the saints have achieved with excellence. An excellent example of the virtue of trustworthiness is seen in St. Bernard. He lived trustworthiness heroically by acting in a way that inspired people to place their confidence in him. Bernard's judgment was known to be so reliable that when he entered the Cistercian order, his brothers and friends followed him into the monastery. His trustworthiness grew so strong that popes even asked him for advice. Let us ask St. Bernard to pray for us that we too may grow in trustworthiness. Educate yourself in virtue. Learn more at educationinvirtue.com. I am Lori Crock, and this is a Holy and Healthy Minute. The practice of fasting can be both holy and healthy. In the fitness world, intermittent fasting is used to cleanse the body of toxins and acts as a reset to move an individual into more healthy eating patterns. Fasting for spiritual reasons is a method of removing potential attachments helping us more clearly see God's will for our lives and moving our hearts to acts of charity. Spiritual fasting doesn't have to be with food. Fasting from anything that takes our time and attention away from God and from being charitable to others can be a powerful practice. Fasting from television, technology, or activities that have an unhealthy hold in our attention can help us grow closer to God. Lord Jesus, please show us what activities are impeding our relationship with you and with others. Help us to be faithful to our vocation and strong, healthy servants working in your most holy name. Amen. Welcome back, friends, to the St. Gabriel Cafe. I'm Amanda Miller. I'm Dave Orsborn. Yeah, changing up the cadence again. (laughs) (laughs) Woohoo! Mary Beth Eberhardt, Lisa Iglesias in the cafe. Ladies, welcome back. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Good to be here. I don't know. Say it like you mean it. Mary Beth? Good morning. Yeah. <laughs> Lisa? Good morning. Yay. <laughs> All right. Thanks for rallying us, Dave. Yep. <laughs> I have coffee this Go morning. Dave. Oh, Go Dave. That's it. <laughs> Go Dave. Go. Okay, okay, okay. Dave has been taking a little coffee break. We He's been have... doing more tea. Yeah, we're behind. So this makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Catch up, ladies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cheers. 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 <laughs> So when we were praying over today's show on letting go, so detachment, where are the attachments in our life and what does freeing ourselves from these attachments really allow us to do? So it's just not as, as simple as um, spring cleaning or you know cleaning out the closet and getting rid of stuff. Um, what does the getting rid of <clears throat> extra stuff allow us to do and where are those things in our lives that you know that we need to push away a little bit uh the gospel passage that kind of inspired this conversation is the rich young man it's in both mark and matthew uh if you want to pray along uh with us today friends it's uh, matthew chapter 19 verses 16 to 22 so This young man approaches Christ with a desire to follow him. Um, The Lord kind of calls him out on, you know, on his his possessions. And the young man wasn't willing to let go or sell his possessions. 
and that stopped him from following Christ. And he went away sorrowful. So, maybe some reflection I know, and we're just not talking, obviously, about um, bad attachments or bad habits, but anything in our life, also the very good things that need to be reordered. So, who wants to go first with their uh, personal confession? (laughs) (laughs) Lisa Lisa, looks at Mary Beth. (laughs) She does, but I'm looking at Lisa's lovely notebook of beautiful reflections. Oh, goodness. And I'm passing. I mean, I think the spring cleaning um, was probably the beginning of the idea of detachment for me because um, I was not and still struggle to be (laughs) like a super... um, Martha Stewarty uh, <laughs> organized ish. Well, maybe not her, but like a person. And, and she ended um, up in prison. I know. So <laughs> yeah, I don't want to do that. But um, <laughs> and so I was always kind of looking for her. Like, how do I do that? And uh, so I think beginning with that, you know, spring cleaning thing is is actually can be a, a beginning of like um, what what now am I free for? How, what now is this closet free for? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and so I would, I would take it a little bit step further and like, well, why do I still have this? You know, and, and a lot of things for me are like the memories attached to them, the uh, accomplishments that I had when I probably still don't need my eighth grade thing, you know, that says that I did a good job. I probably still don't need, you know, um, some of those old things. And, um, but I would still have them, you know, and um, so I still have a few things that are old, things my grandmother crocheted and things like that. And, um, I don't know why I still do though. So it's just, I know no one after me, um, we're not going to go down a road of like cleaning right now, but like there is something called death cleaning. <laughs> and um, um, I think it's like Swedish death cleaning. And really it's actually a kindness you would do for your family. Like, do you really want to know that your family, your children have to go through that trunk of old stuff of yours? Like, and they're going to go, Paper, paper, you know, trash, 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 and something that maybe was meaningful to you. What do you would would you like to them to just be able to sit around and go, oh, it was always fun when Mama tried to make cookies and they never were quite right and they spread it all over the pan. Wasn't that fun? Like, oh boy, you know, I'd rather them do that than go, boy, those are ten running T-shirts that never fit her after two thousand and you know five. And um, so I think it's a be- it was a beginning for me to kind of think about. Okay, well, if this is like the closet and the clothing, then what else is God calling me to? You know, you you talk about, you use like what now, and that struck me, Lisa, because I think we work in seasons, we live our life in seasons, and so we might have an attachment to, it might be a season of attachment to a thing, um, a possession, but I think we also walk through seasons of attachment to control um, and attachment to you know our own will and being able to ask the lord what now what next is is a strategy that has helped me parent has helped me be a better wife mother daughter Mm -hmm. i think that's that's kind of my sweet sauce that i don't know i don't dip into it enough if Mm. that makes sense i think too though as we're in the thick of it um whether it's a happy, busy season or um, just a season that you're like, please, God, let this end, Mm -hmm. you know. Um, We just, um, we may not even realize that we're hanging on to a particular attachment, whether it's um, hanging on to, you know, old hurts. Like, I I did not even realize in life um, until, until, you know, getting to go to different, you know, conferences here and there, here in the diocese and, um, learning more about like the this freedom that God wants for us has for us is, is right there opening his arms to give us from old hurts or old um, lies that I would believe or or um, things that I know that I've made mistakes with like you know even you know I would go to confession but not even consider or realize that I could bring some of these things even to confession and that it's available like daily weekly you know and um 
to be free from some of those things, even the self, you know, the self, uh, the things we hold against ourselves. Um, but to, to be blind to it is, 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 um, I don't know. I don't know if, I don't know if I ter- felt terribly culpable for some of the things that I did not realize, but once we are told and we are aware that, you know, this, these old things that you used to think or do, um, those are actually attachments that don't bring you closer to me. And so was this from the catechism here that 226, um, mm-hmm. I, I love what it's what it says here. It says it means so holy indifference slash detachment. Okay, so I just sat and prayed with that holy indifference. What does that mean? So, but so two twenty six says it means making good use of created things. Faith in God, the only one, leads us to use everything that is not God only in so far as it brings us closer to Him, and to detach ourselves from it insofar as it turns us away from him. And that's like, man, I wish 22 year old Lisa had read that (laughs) because that would have really helped me to like classify, yeah, this can go, this needs to leave my life. And these things are here and God gave them to me, whether it was a gift a talent or people in my life, that that's, this is where you need to lean in. When we let go of things, it opens the door for that freedom that the Lord is offering us. And whether it be that control, whether it be the, you know, the attachment to, um, you know, possessions or um, whatnot. I think the beauty of it all is that God is, he's a provider. And and, and it's, you know, we, um, as a parent, you look at it and you think, I want to give to you. All you need to do is this. You, and mm-hmm. and um, I often look at my own life in the lens of, um, um, I mean, makes sense, a, a mother and how I'm asking my child or trying to teach them, you know, in order, in order to have this peace that you're seeking, you need to do this. And yet, I don't know, why don't we? Mm. Why is it so hard? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm also struck by that part in the catechism, this, this thing only in so far as it brings us closer to him and to detach ourselves in so far it turns us away from him. That does make things very clear, right? Mm-hmm. But at the same time, um, sometimes it's hard to see it. And it just reminds me of the gospel reflection this morning and kind of what I was trying to pray about, just like, Lord, where am I blind? Right? Like where, where in these the ways that I'm attached and don't even realize it. Um, do I need to examine what's bringing me closer to you and what's taking me away from you? Mary Beth Eberhardt, Lisa Iglesias from the visitation here in the cafe. I don't want to move beyond those things that we can detach from, but what I'm picking up also Lisa from just hearing you read, uh, this, uh, paragraph 226, when we have unhealthy attachments, how it can get in the way of even recognizing the blessings. So, so they're, they're a distraction or, or they're filling space that otherwise should be made up of good things, better things even, that show us to Christ. So, uh, example, if you're holding a grudge, against somebody if you're holding on to that until you let it go you can't really appreciate the blessing that that person is in your life Mm. and by letting go then you free up the space to to have a better relationship with Mm. that person it goes back to, to today's gospel right i mean so you take the the plank the beam Mm -hmm. the log out of your own lie uh, out of your own eye so that um so that you can better see the blessing yeah that's in your life a story that's coming to my mind years ago i worked for a parish and uh, um the pastor was just kind of talking about it was time to look at the ministries and how long everyone's been in the ministry and re-offer different positions to people 
And I was a little struck by that because I was like, oh, I didn't know that that's something that you do regularly. And he's like, oh, yes. Every two years, I suggest that who's ever in the ministry um, look at if they're still called to it and it's time to possibly move on because it's been two years. Mm-hmm. And I, I found that so interesting because, you know, when someone's doing a ministry and a ministry is very good and and why would you need to examine that? But he was teaching me a lesson in that, like, even when there are good things that we do and even in the ways that we're serving our Lord, is it possibly becoming an attachment? Is it possible that I'm grasping onto it and now this is mine? Or is it something the Lord is still asking me to steward and am I stewarding it well? Mm -hmm. Um, And I've heard also in terms of looking at ministry or whatever it is, um, this idea that, you know, because a lot of times we we wanna grasp at it because we're like, well, then who else will do it, right? Mm -hmm. And, And in that same conversation, the pastor was teaching me, but if they don't step away, the person who is called to it, there's no space for them to walk into it. And it was just so enlightening to me because it, it, it does get at this idea of sometimes there can be good things in our life. Sometimes we need to hold on to them, but sometimes we do need to ask the Lord, Lord is, have I made this about me? Have I made this my possession? Or is it still yours? And and how are you calling me to either let go or steward it still well? Mm. Okay, so. <clears throat> Embarrassing to share, but um, I was praying with this um, in adoration. And I, I, th- I really feel like the Lord was showing me. Um, I was just kind of thinking back like, um, Cam kind of uh, encouraged us to think of all of this within um, the lens of like the mama's perspective kind of thing. So I was, you'll kind of like thinking back and of course I can always quickly remember the hardest parts and the worst example of myself sadly comes quickly. Um, So I was really like praying with that and like, okay, so uh, being a mom was like, um, that was set in my heart really early in my life. Like that was going to be what, I really felt strongly called to, didn't know how that was going to look, but, um, but I would find that I was, and, and you just put, thank you, Jesus, like all the words to what the Lord was kind of like showing just for me in adoration. Um, and I couldn't write fast enough, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but, um, but you just put the words to, to it, Amanda, thank you. So that idea of being a good mom was something I attached myself to. And that Lisa was a mom and that she um, was a a good mom. And so um, I needed to then look like the good mom, act like the good mom. My kids had to act like they were good kids, of course. And um, I had to clothe, shelter, feed them in the, quote, right way. And um, a lot of me was wrapped up in that. I allowed myself to attach myself to this uh, this notion of being a good mom. And so for me, it took a very uh, strange, <laughs> interesting um, thing that I grabbed onto. Okay, so I didn't ask, like here, you know, asking, ask the Lord, you know, how does he, where does he want to, you to work? You know, is this the ministry you're called to still? I mean, I think I would have always, thank you, Jesus, be called to the ministry or vocation of motherhood. Okay, but um, I did not ask is this what you want me to do as mom? Do you want me to be, you know, hollering at them because they made a mess? Do you really want me to be? I never really stopped and asked because when things would go south, which is like not, it's one of those, it's not if they go south, it's when and how many times today are things going to go south? Um, My reaction would always come out of like fear of like, oh my gosh, I'm failing. Oh my gosh, I'm... I'm just so bad at this and oh my goodness, you know, and, um, and, and I, and I had, you know, put in front of me these elevated on pedestals, uh, people around me that I thought were killing it, who are doing such a good job and were so peaceful and sitting to my left is one of those people, Mary Beth Mm -hmm. Hard, um, home is full of peace and love and, um, great joy and good food and all the lovely, you know, just really sweet kids and, um, 
And so what I, in that, I found myself not, um, uh, not, not coming to Jesus. I was, I was going, oh my goodness, Lord, help me with this. Help me with that kid, whatever. And not going, Lord, here I am, daughter of God. Mm-hmm. That's my first name. The, I'm also now D, I'm Deacon's wife. I'm, I'm Doug's wife. I'm grateful, Lord. And then, oh, yes, you always bless me with these kids. I mean, if I think if I had 25, six-year-old Lisa would have taken a few moments each day and just sat in the gratitude, <laughs> mm. like you're saying, Dave, my heart would have been different when the different things came down. And uh, so I think that was, I'm grateful that this is the topic because I think the Lord is putting healing for me. Um and that that was an attachment to that name, that label, that, um, I don't know, I'm grateful, yeah. Mm. I think of the man who had all the possessions and the Lord, um, you know, the Lord said, you know, basically asked him to give them away. I think the man, you know, looking back at him, if I could give him some wisdom, it would be, to say, Lord, what do you want me to, like, um, before the encounter with the Lord, it is, I realize I have this treasure, whether it be a physical possession or I have this, this beautiful marriage, I have these beautiful children. What do you want me to do with them? And it's, again, it goes back to that, like, what next or what now? The Lord, you know, um, we tend to take a gift, whether it be... Um, you know, in a relationship, a friendship, you know, I have this friendship with Lisa and it is like, um, our human nature can sometimes be like, yeah, I've got this cool friend and we do this together. And, it, and, and, and it, um, instead of turning it to gratitude and saying, what do you, how do you want us to use this friendship? Right. Um, because everything is from the Lord. Every gift is from the Lord. And so whether you're in a season of trial whether you're in a season of joy, it's like, Lord, um, I recognize that there, there is a gift in this because it's from you. And, um, and trying not to possess, trying not to own, but rather to um, do well with what we've been given. Um, there's a freedom in that. There's like, you see me shaking off my, um, my attachment. I think it's really important. I think there's some... When you, when you, holy people here, uh, Pam, Amanda, like. and Dave, when you <laughs> think like, about you looking at? <laughs> freedom, I'm looking at you, no, <laughs> um, about the, the what is holding us back from from being free and living a more full life? That idea of like, what are the things that are holding us back? Um, first of all, like, is that like an active? prayer of yours like is that is that like you have that <laughs> depth of faith like that to 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 be able to be vulnerable enough even with the lord and pray that but but um have have you taken those have you really have you thought about those things what what are some of those things because mine are different than yours like what would be some of those that you guys experience confession go ahead ladies first <laughs> I, feel like I did my confession so now maybe i we'll, can be joined we'll go around the table amanda then okay, cam fine. Then, then I'll go. Fine. vulnerability um i okay because i have i think a um i i mm, <laughs> i can be pretty tender sometimes and and um i think i have to fight against myself to put up walls because, um, for instance, I notice sometimes in myself that when someone is explaining themselves to me or even apologizing or something, part of me doesn't want to let go of the hurt because I don't want to be hurt again. <laughs> and I have to, I have to actively take that to the Lord in the moment. And I have to say, okay, I recognize what's happening in myself right now. And if I want to grow and if I want to love, I, I have to recognize what's going on inside of me and I need the grace to let it go. 
Um, and so that is something I think I try to actively be aware of and actively try to do and, and look at myself, you know, or, or even actually, as Dave, you had mentioned hanging on to old hurts, right? Mm -hmm. Like letting go of those things. So as to be detached and more free to love well, this makes me think of just the process of self-reflecting on those emotions or triggers that come up in our lives and, and just not kind of going like, oh yeah, that just made me upset and that person shouldn't have done that or whatever it might be. But asking the deeper question of like, okay, but why did that upset me? Did, was that, was my reaction greater than what the situation called for? And that's always a key to show you, okay, there's something else going on there. Because if my reaction is greater than the situation called for, it probably means I have a deeper wound or deeper hurt that needs to be looked at and addressed and taken to the Lord for healing. Mm. Everybody's looking at me now. Now it's your <laughs> turn, Cam. I get attached to my opinions. Mm. Um, I think that's not unique to me, but I think I am keenly aware of it frequently in my life, especially with the Lord. As we've been talking about attachment and detachment, I've been the image that's been coming to mind to me today is home renovation. Um, and I'm the person who lives in the home, right? And the Lord's the professional who comes in to renovate my home. And I think sometimes I tell the Lord, oh, wouldn't it be really cool if we just knocked down that wall right there? And if we, you know, restructured it this way and we, uh, you know, pushed, pushed it out that way and stuff like that. And sometimes the Lord's like, yeah, but that's a load bearing wall. And we can't knock it down or everything's going to come crumbling down. Or sometimes I'm like, oh, man, I just want to like section that room off because I don't like going in there. So let's just put a wall up there. And he's like, well, well, no, <laughs> that's not what I'm calling you to do. And I think frequently I, I try to push those opinions on the Lord and say, well, this is how I would like things to go in my life, mm -hmm. Jesus. You know, this is, this is my recommendation as the, <laughs> as the person living in the home. Um, and a lot of times it's detaching from that, recognizing that he has a better idea of how things are going to go. Um, even when I don't see that better idea, even when I don't, um, experience it in the way that I want to, because I think even sometimes, you know, my opinion is, is directed directly against like, suffering and then when i am in suffering it's directly against processing that suffering you sure. know it's run away from this as far as possible but i think sometimes suffering is like that wall that needs to be knocked down it's that hey th this will hurt the house but it's necessary to grow the there are portions of that spiritual home inside me that uh, are like a house that was built in 1920, you know, and, and it's just time that there are some updates um, and some things that grow because otherwise, if I let them sit and I let them fester and I let them stick around for a long time, it's not that they can't be replaced later, but there, there's going to be more work that needs to be happened later. Um I think I've experienced that in my in my young life, even things from high school that I'm still like that. I'm only just now. Oh, Lord, I can see you were calling me to let go of things back then that I didn't do. And now I'm having to now and it hurts more now mm -hmm. than it might have hurt back then. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, a lot of just letting go of opinions sometimes and in the way that I think the world should be uh, chronic. 25 year old the world revolves around me right uh in order to let the lord uh actually do what he's the professional at mm. i appreciate this imagery of the the house cam in this what did you call it remodeling no mm -hmm. renovation renovation yeah in this renovation and i in my own life i've noticed there have been times where i i'm not always detached from the time or the process right and sometimes we're just like, yeah, Lord, like same cam, like, um, let's just do this. And I want healing or I want to do all these things. Right. And I want it to go quick and I'm just ready to do it. And he's like, yeah, but houses don't get built in a day <laughs> and like, just slow down. Also, you're going to hurt yourself if you 
you try to do it all at once and let's go a little slow with this because it's going to be a hard process. Mm -hmm. Um, And then there's times where I want to avoid the process. And Mm -hmm. I think that's something I also try to be reflective of. Like if I notice myself, um, whatever it might be, scrolling or I'm getting way too into a show and watching it all the time or whatever it might be, or even sometimes books, like I'll just like, fine, I'm just going to check out and read, read every night, whatever it is. And noticing those places where we check out um, because sometimes the Lord's like, well, you know, we still have to build the house. You know, we shouldn't just let it sit there. <laughs> um, so trusting his timing and detaching from the desire to one, speed it up, but also the tendency sometimes to slow it down and ignore it. This is coming to mind too, also getting attached to the fear of losing the good thing, right? Mm -hmm. Oh man, I love the way my kitchen looks and Lord, you're telling me you have to cut into the drywall because you're renovating the living room, right? But what if that messes up my kitchen? You know, (laughs) what if if it just completely destroys the kitchen? And the Lord's like, it's not gonna destroy the kitchen. It's gonna, I have to work in the kitchen in order to get to the living room. But do you trust me that I'm not going to take away the good thing that I built into it originally? And if I do do you trust me that I'm going to replace it with something better? Yeah, that's the hard part. (laughs) What was the question? (laughs) It's okay. No, no, we've we've been really, uh, it's been a blessing to have the Eucharist here in in our chapel. Mm. Uh, The amount of time that uh, we've all been able to spend Mm -hmm. uh, in the Lord. It gives me the desire to change how I approach the Lord mm-hmm. in, in, in prayer, especially in, in adoration where I set um, kind of the agenda that this is how I'm going. This is how I'm going to spend the holy hour. And, you know, so I'll take in some scripture, some spiritual reading, but I'm the one that's driving it. So it's, it's that attachment to my plans rather than being humble before the Lord and I mean, part of it's out of fear, just sitting bare in front of the Lord mm-hmm. and letting him speak and say, this is where the renovation has to happen. You know, this is, you know, Dave, put your stuff aside, <laughs> you know, son, we're going to have mm-hmm. a talk. And yeah, I mean, that, that lays it all out there. But thinking about even the tone that he would have had in front of his disciples the last few days in these corrections and how he's calling them deeper, it's not scolding. It's, it's um, constructive direction. And that's hard to receive, maybe even especially from a loved one, to say that this is what my plan is for you. So... Let, let, let's talk. This is where these are some things that need to be worked out and, and having that humility to, to sit before the Lord. I love the word humility because it, it, it actually just confirms something. Cam, you were talking about, again, this analogy of renovation. And I think sometimes we want to be the person that's doing all the work um, in our home. We don't want to bring in other people and, Um, I'm thinking of, you know, like there's a project and um, maybe my, maybe my husband is not the person to take on that project and his gifts are in another direction, right? But, um, you know, he wants, he wants to be the one to do it in the same way where um, I might, I might try to paint a bedroom and, well, I'm not as meticulous, right? Um, When we have struggles or and we try to we hold on to them we try to take care of them ourselves we don't want to let other people in um and um and yet there those same people can come into our world and or into our home and um and bring light and bring peace and bring healing and those and their gifts from the lord and so when we detach ourselves from um this feeling of being able to um, 
or not even being, but just wanting to control it, wanting to, um, wanting to make it better when we can't. And others might, um, might have those gifts. The Lord might be bringing them in. I think there's um, something to opening the doors to, to that kind of help as well, that kind of renovation, if you will. The humility aspect, I think, as you're sharing there, Mary Beth, is key because you're right. How often do we, maybe we're scared of the vulnerability of letting someone else into our our space or our need for help. And, and yet it does take vulnerability and how, how beautiful that prayer of just like, but I can't, mm. or I need help. And I think too often we want to be self-sufficient and actually how beautiful it is and how humbling it is and how healing it can be to just say, I need help. And to then allow whoever's the right person, you know, first and foremost, the Lord. And then whoever, like you said, who, who is it Lord that, that this person can come in and help me with this project. Mm -hmm. Right. The image uh, that I have is, um, you know, the Lord asking to hold both of your hands. And if, if you're grasping something with one hand, you can't give them both hands. And how often is he asking, you know, just put that down, mm -hmm. you know, take, take, I want both of your hands. And in order to do that, you know, you have to let go. Yeah. Um, as a teenager in youth group, um, we, uh, Doug and I had a really vibrant youth group, um, in high school and there was different times, different like um, prayer times that would take us through. And one of them, and it's kind of stuck with me, I'll forget about doing it, but is of, of looking at your hands and, um, and asking, Lord, what do you want to do with these? And when it was me trying to do everything, mom wise, house wise, you know, kids, myself, these hands were, um, you know, putting a kid in time out and like they were like cleaning diapers and they were, you know, the never ending mess or whatever. I mean, please know that there was a lot of good, but for some reason I remember the hard more, um, and maybe not so gentle, maybe not so peaceful and happy and, and loving, you know, may, and, and so I would, I would uh, lament that look at the hands with like such sadness. And, uh, but I think, I think to look at our hands and go, okay, Lord, um, I want to be your disciple. I want to uh, order this situation, whether it's a, 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 a blissful season you're in or like the most wretched season you're in. Order this all according to your will, Lord. Um, that's my prayer all the time, especially when I can't help when my family's far away and they need help or someone close by who I cannot fix this. Yeah. It's a tragedy. I cannot do anything. Um, I think like that surrender is um, is easier when it is competent, strong, holy hands we're putting it our thing into, like you're saying. He wants to hold our hands, but he'll he wants to also hold this thing that we're like grasping to and trying to solve um, our worries, our fears, our troubles. And then, like you're saying, Mary Beth, like you know, allowing for me, it's one or two <laughs> people in. Really, like a, I could teach you a few things if you want to learn about building walls, Amanda. I, I, I got it down. Um, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> um, I, it's, 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 it's hard. It's a stumbling block for me. But like having those one or two people who remind you, get back up. You're not a mm. failure. Try again. Yeah. Surrender again. Yeah, what you were saying is maybe it's not always just letting go or dropping them, but giving them to Christ, right? Handing them over. Mm -hmm. I am a chronic. Going to the cross. I am a chronic. Bring all the groceries in the house in one trip, kind of guy. <laughs> you struggle right. with my kids, that too. My kids still do that because of you. Kim. I know they have a race and yes. it's a challenge and things break. Yep, they yep. fall. Yep. Spaghetti and jars. This is how it plays out in my life. Is I get home from the grocery store, right, and and I. <laughs> load up both of my arms with all of the groceries and I get to the front door and then I realize I can't open the front door because my hands are full, right? 
Um, and I think that it gets exactly to to what you were saying, Dave, is in the spiritual life. I think I do the same thing sometimes where I'm like, I'm going to pick up all of it. And Jesus is like, well, you know, you could hand me those bags in your right hand. And then and then we both, you know, would be able to to share that. Um, I think of Simon the Cyrene when Jesus mm-hmm. is carrying his cross, you know, helps Jesus carry his cross. And in many ways for us, as we follow after Jesus, we take up our crosses and follow him. Jesus takes the place of Simon and says, let me help you carry it. But I think sometimes we look at him and we're like, oh, but Lord, you told me discipleship is taking my cross and following you. And so I'm going to do that and I'm going to do it well. And I'm going to do it just like you did it by myself. And then he's like, well, but I didn't do it by myself. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, this takes a lot of self, like having space, having time for self-reflection. And um, I, I am a recovering chronic scroller and, um, and uh, I'm some of the most free people spiritually and just like able to be present people that I've ever known are not on social media and they're not um, burdened by having to know the news uh, up to the minute and what is the trend and do I have the wrong tennis shoes and oh my gosh and do I have the right hair um, they're they're and so I tried it and I'm you know so I'm free of social media um, and I get yeah, now I, th- I realize that I think now I, I think for myself I'm not just thinking about what uh, people are telling me to think about or what I watched and and I think there's room for that because um, Think Air World Radio is online, so we should be listening to <laughs> Think Air World Radio online. But um, again, using it as a as something that brings us closer to God. Um, I mean, you know, make it a challenge. Give yourself a week or so. But it's it, it's it's for me. It's been a huge healing place. Mm-hmm. So we, Mary Beth and I often talk about like what are practicals we can do to try to you know live out our faith, be disciples of Christ. And for me, that has been a massive change. And um, like the plank in your eye and things yeah. and being able to see, I feel like I, I can hear him deeper. I, I, I want to listen. Yeah. For me. You know? Letting the Lord lead, being very attuned to what he's asking us to give up and recognizing that in asking us to give up, he is also giving. Hmm. I think that's the key for me the takeaway for today final word amanda yeah just i think through all of this kind of some of the crux of it is just self-awareness and self-examination and creating that space and time to be quiet to go to the lord um but that that doesn't mean just just creating the space it means filling it with time with the lord filling it with prayer um so as to allow ourselves to see what do we need to be attached from Lord so as to fill it with being attached to you and whatever you are calling me to. Amen. Great conversation. Mary Beth Eberhardt, Lisa Iglesias, thanks for being here to wrap up our week. God bless you guys. Coming up on Monday, Father Mike Lump will be here. We'll be talking about hospital ministry and how to prepare ourselves and our families when an anointing of the sick is necessary. Have a great weekend. Amanda, glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be a world without end. Amen. God love you all. See you on Monday.